All right, looks like we're ready to start some derby today. We have the Windy City Rollers Second Wind and Detroit Roller Derby All-Stars B Team. Everybody's getting ready to make this happen. Who do we have on the line? The line appears to be occupied by Nicholas Rage for Windy City Second Wind. They're in black today. And for Detroit, that is Nat Attack. We saw a lot of Nicholas Rage yesterday, making some big points, putting some scores up on the board. And I haven't seen Detroit skate since Friday evening, so I don't know what, what their day bout was like yesterday. I wasn't able to make it, but. Sure, hopefully they're rested and ready to go. But it looks like Nicholas Rage is out of the pack with lead jam. Seems excited about that, as she should be. Crashing through the front, making points, calling it off quickly. Hit it and quit it. Four to zero jam there. Second win leads to start. So uh, I'm Brunasti announcing today and with me. Reverend Killjoy. We got to do this yesterday. Super fun. It was super fun. We'll see if we've fun. got more fun facts. I don't know. I heard uh, I heard some of the some of the fun facts used about Chicago last night at the I happened to, I happened to go to the uh, Chicago A Team after party last night for a ah, while. Ah, So great. I heard that some of the fun facts were not strictly accurate. Sure, I mean um, our sources may not be great. Right. Our sources were uh, purposely Questionable. unreliable. <laughs> is really what, but what still fun. Of, that's what a fun yeah. okay a fun not fact. I know, it's um, fine. It looks like we've got Luna Rose Hip and Hannibal Wrecker jamming right now. Uh, no one has been called lead as of yet. We've got a very strong wall up front. But Luna does make it through and is called the jammer. Great apex jump there, but coming back, concerned about whether that was landed legally. Um, coming back to the back of that pack, juking around. Luna did a fantastic job staying in bounds right there, especially like yeah. whipping the right leg around so as not to accidentally touch a wheel outside. Very yep. aware of her body. Staying on that one skate, so agile. Um, but caught up front behind a tough wall of second wind skaters. So we do have Panabel Wrecker getting points on the board. That was a 4-4 jam there. And the second win is up 8-4 to four currently. Shout out to our uh, officials. I think we can talk about who's out there right now. Okay. Yeah, we have Idiopathic, Gwen Ophir, Freya Mind, Bruce, Springs, uh, Bruce Springsteen. I know Bruce. I'm so sorry, Bruce. Um, <laughs> Anorism, Triple Destruction, Apron, Bianca Dunk, a Smash Ketchum, No Ship Sherlock, Seer, Joss Bladen, Ogre, Spike, Sriracha, and DOC. Got a little pile up on the uh, track there. Uh, but thank you to our officials for being here today. So Tina Fatal, for uh, the second wind, headed to the penalty box on a track cut. And that leaves the lone jammer on the track as Greco of Detroit. All right, so Greco still has a chance to um, gain lead jam status, correct? We'll see what happens here. Really solid blocking up front by second win. Got that tripod um, plus an additional blocker up front ready to rotate and catch. Greco forced to recycle all the way back by... Box Force 5, I believe, was who um, knocked that skater out. And uh, 187 did that drawback. That is our favorite now. Our favorite to say, at least. Yeah. Go ahead. Kicking McChugget. Yes. Yeah, there you go. Favorite to say. We do have Tina Fatal getting out of the pack. That was the initial pass. Not lead, as she was in the penalty box a little bit earlier on this jam. Oh, big hit. And Greco was hit to that inside, is being drawn back again. Fox Force 5 really um, 
Got some dangerous hips out there for that solid blocking. And Tina Fatal, presence of mind, get back up and keep on pushing. Has scored four points on that pass. So no points scored there for Detroit. That was a long jam. Yes. With a lot of defense played. See a lot of solid walls with that uh, braced tripod set up. I'm curious to see what replaces that as you know a primary blocking tool someday. I don't know what it'll be, but nothing lasts forever in roller derby. That is true. Nicholas Rage is the lead jammer now, coming up to the back of that Detroit wall. Um, does get through for four points. And Monster is Monster is also out coming around to the back of the pack. Nicholas Rage calling that off. Getting those four points and ending that jam quickly. I enjoyed how Nicholas Rage uh, listened to the coaching there. Knew her opponent was coming up on her, so hit the pack called it off before scoring any points, but rather than trying to get that one point herself, not risking her opponent scoring. So you know you got time to hit the pack that one time and then let it go. Absolutely. Looks like we have Nat attack up against Hannibal Wrecker. We s we've seen Hannibal Wrecker on the line quite a few times uh, this tournament, jamming for Chicago, but Nat attack is your lead jammer. Right, it looks like Chicago didn't quite have time to fully complete that tripod, and so Nat Attack was able to break through. And this time, uh, it looked like the same thing might happen, but instead Nat Attack sent to the penalty box. Eight two zero with a high block, it appears. Also going to the box. That's right. That was not the call that some of us were expecting, because you see the last... You, know, you got the last blocker on the jammer, and you expect an out of play and the, the blocker to go to the box, but instead it's a high block on the jammer. Right, so both uh, jammers were in the box briefly, and 13, Nat Attack released as Hannibal Wrecker sat down, um, per rules of roller derby, when both jammers are getting their first penalty of a jam. So Nat Attack is through for four points. This jam will go the full two minutes. Although Hannibal pushing through that pack in the back. Finally threw on her initial pass. Nice work pushing and pushing and pushing on that inside line, turning and uh, finding uh, some space on that outside in order to get through and get four points herself. Looks like we have a timeout for Detroit. That last jam went a full two minutes and uh, each team was able to gain eight points. For those of you watching at home, we've got second wind in black jerseys today. Detroit Roller Derby B team in the white. Brews uh, Springsteen uh, out on the pivot line, indicating that there's a timeout. Indeed. Oh, we could talk about like, with, do you want to do the rosters? Just that sounds like a great quick? idea. Okay. Let's do it. So for Detroit, we've yes. got number 013, Nat Attack. Number 7, Rose. Number 14, Oi. Number 1530, Eye Catcher. Number 17, Monster. Number 22, Storm Crash Her Captain. Number 25, Sugar Snaps. Number 31, Ryder. Number 4, Merrill Slaughterbird. Number 428, 
Freakin' Reakin, number 44, Driver, number 55, Greco, number 667, Luna Rosehip, number 81, Slamazon, number 9, Tessa Hurtu. We can just wait on Absolutely. Windy. 667, Luna Rosehip, who you just mentioned, is jamming for Detroit. And we see Blink 182, fun name to say, um, jamming for second win. Oh, yeah, we could have looked up some Blink-182 lyrics to make puns out of, but I still don't know any of their songs. Right. I'm sure I would recognize them if I, you know. I'm yeah, like, oh, yeah I know didn't that happen. You were at an after party. I, I went home to bed. So we have a uh, Luna Rosehip as a lead jammer currently. Some great lateral movement by that second wind blocking tripod, rotating as needed to keep that jammer behind them. Looks like 413 is headed to the box. That is malicious. A penalty called on 81, and Luna Rosehip is through, but not your lead jammer. So a 3-0 jam to Detroit on that last one. And to the line this time, we've got Nicholas Rage for the second wind, lined up with Rose of Detroit. We've got short packs for both teams currently. And on that inside line, we have Nicholas Rage. She's got some great speed coming around that track. No fear as she comes into the back of that pack. Tiptoeing on the inside line to get those four points. And calls it off. 4-0 jam there. Or is it three? Did I count incorrectly? Made, oh, there it is, four. I thought I saw it. Hannibal Wrecker out there for Chicago. And that is Monster jamming for Detroit. Hannibal Wrecker is lead jammer, but Monster is close behind. I love watching that toe stop work. Um, we saw that with Monsters recently here. And it looks like there were a couple of points, two points picked up by second win. Impressive that Hannibal Wrecker managed to get through, get two points, and call that off without cutting the track or falling over. Nat Attack and Tina Fatal to the line for their respective teams. Tina in the second wind black. Nat Attack in the white of Detroit. Second wind currently at 30 points with Detroit at 15. Detroit is pushing up front currently. But Tina hot on her skates. And that first pass, second wind was down a blocker. That'd be Demand a Beating, who's been a powerhouse on the track uh, all weekend. And that, I think, helped Nat Attack get through and get lead. Now, with all four wind blockers out there, it's taken a little bit more effort. Yeah, as you mentioned, Demand a Beating swinging those hips and knocking Nat Attack out, bringing her all the way back. It was tough. Nat Attack had to really weave through all the officials at Center Track just to get back on the track. So. Correct. And you need to be aware of the officials. Don't take any of them out either. It is not legal and not safe. Nat Attack able to use just a brute force to knock over Nasty Al to get through and finally break out and get those four points. We've got Tina Fatal through, finding a hole up the middle. 
and Nat Attack calling it off. Joss Bleeden checking with Spike to make sure they get the right number of points by Nat on that final pass. And it looks like that is two, two extra points. So that was a 4-6 jam in favor of Detroit Roller Derby B team. We've got Nicholas Rage again on the line and out. Quickly running up that outside line and planning how she's going to hit as she comes into the back of that pack. At the same time, we've got Luna Rose hit being drawn back and trying that inside line, being knocked out handily by 512, which is Sandy Cheeks. Nicholas Rage that time tried the same move to go outside in and that time cut the track. The previous pass was beautiful. She leaned to the outside. She got the entire tripod to lean to the outside, opening up the inner part of the track and was able to get through and get the points. The second time, however, Detroit made the adjustment and drew the penalty on Nicholas Rage. All right, so it looks like we've got Luna really pushing into that tripod up front. Meanwhile, Nicholas Rage just slides around the outside, coming out of the, uh, that penalty box hot, looking to take those points. We, we have Nicholas Rage headed back to the box. I didn't quite catch what that penalty was. So 30 more, 30 more seconds in the box for Nicholas Rage here, taking a little breather in the penalty box, while Luna is um, having a tough time pushing that second wind wall of lockers. So that time, Nicholas Rage had two trips to the box where she remains, and so this will start a uh, power start for Detroit. But two trips to the box, still scored eight points to the four for Detroit. So really a testament to the blockers of the second wind, able to slow down Little Rosehip and keep her from uh, taking strong advantage of that double power jam. We have Rose on the line, the only jammer currently on the track. And her blockers are doing their best to provide some offensive maneuvers to try and get her through. It looks like Oi out there. Trying to break up that pack in the front. Nicholas Rage back on the track, using some of that rage that's part of her name to push. And just never gives up. Rose has been named your lead jammer. Is working to get some points now. Nicholas trying to do some tiptoeing around the outside at first and then the inside. She comes back in and gives herself a little bit of s uh, space to gather speed before hitting the pack again. In the meantime, Rose has picked up four points for Detroit. And now Tricky Pixie providing some support to Nicholas Rage, trying to help her through that pack. Rose with another four points. Excellent job there by Nicholas Rage, coming in from the outside, entering the track, uh, and keeping the outside line, only had one blocker to go through 
using uh, strong physical jamming to get through and get those last points. Forty six thirty seven, your listed score as we pass Star Wars time on the clock. Eleven thirty eight to go. We have Monster on the line again for Detroit, and it looks like Hannibal Wrecker. Fun fact, possibly not fact, that she comes from a long line of hippie vegans. That info was fed to us yesterday. Um, and she is working through that pack, but it looks like Monster got out first and is the jammer. Hannibal Wrecker really coming up hot, trying to get some points. Yes. Fantastic job there by Monster, <laughs> dragging a toe to go keep him going out of bounds, and then hopping. I don't know how the hopping changed her momentum in her feet enough to stay in bounds, but it was a remarkably impressive looking maneuver. That is some great agility. I imagine that's being practiced um, in their space <laughs> back in Detroit. I've seen jammers jump all sorts of things to be prepared for any possible situation on the track and uh, that's bringing Detroit to 43 points I believe second win at 50 so they're really chipping away at that lead as we pass 10 minutes left in the first period clock this is the last B-team game of this B-team tournament. We do have the juniors, the Minnesota Roller Girls, Minnesota Frostbite, playing against, uh, I believe, Sioux Falls in the 2 o'clock fi finale of this Have a Nice Day tournament. That is true. Looks like Detroit is out for lead jam again. That is Nat Attack. And second win is at 54 points. I believe I said that wrong um, with Detroit at 43, but working on a scoring pass currently. Blink 1 Skitty 2 is also out of the pack on their initial pass. <laughs> Blink attempts the apex jump, uh, bounces off a body and hits the floor, forced to recycle around. Valiant effort, but uh, the defense was up to the task of stopping the, the apex jump. Nat attack using uh, that agility on the outside line up on those toe stops does get through smiling as she comes around the corner oh and almost slides on that outside does get bumped out and needs to recycle back to the back of the pack while blink one skatey two uh, does a little equipment adjustment there make sure those knee pads stay on and I think we uh, have a little time to announce the Windy City Rollers second win roster as well. We've got um, 182, that is Blink, 182. 187 is Kickin' McChugget. 1975 is Nasty Al. 21, Tricky Pixie. 260 is Trouble Helix. We've got 303, Grower Power. 413, Malicious. Fox Force 5. Number five, Fox Force. Five, uh, 12 is Sandy Cheeks. 52, Death Ray. Six is Tina Fatal. 69, Demand a, be a Beating. We've got 775 is Vanasty. 777 is Pitbull Princess. 815, Pika Bruise. 820 is Hannibal Wrecker. And nine is Nicholas Rage. Now, uh, the timeout has uh, become an official review by Detroit. So, so the second wind timeout followed immediately by a, an official review by Detroit. Um, we've seen a few successful official review challenges this weekend. Uh, two by the Minnesota Nice the other night in the same bout. That was impressive. We did, yes. We can give a shout out to a couple of our super fans uh, here in the building cheering on the Chicago Windy City second wind. We've got none other than Bryant Mumble, longtime announcer for Windy City. 
who now resides in Baraboo, Wisconsin, but still makes it back to Chicago for roller derby. Uh, Lots of fun things in Baraboo. I've been to Baraboo. It's I, great. I think I've been off the highway there, yes. Sure. Absolutely. Um, another one of our super fans watching from home, uh, cheering on the Detroit Derby girls, is none other than AK-40 Ounce, uh, longtime roller derby announcer, coach, skater, uh, tournament organizer, Maven. Um, so he was... He told me he'd be watching today after we talked during last night's bout when he was texting me during the bout, which was very professional. Yeah. Um, he can do that. Him. He can sure. do that. It's just unprofessional is that I was looking, but that's fine. I didn't notice. You, 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 you were sneaky. <laughs> I didn't he just it was great. We also want to uh, thank our volunteers that are making this happen. Um, we've got some great EMTs here. We've got our Minnesota crew, and we've got uh, Papa or maybe Grandpapa Doc and, and, and Mama Doc here from Windy City as medics. Um, Kitty Nip has been here all weekend. Mm -hmm. I know Malls to the Walls is over there. I guys should know that. Really appreciate them being here, making sure that uh, if we have any issues or injuries, they're available. Sometimes for ice, splint, wheelchair, or just gummy bears. Kitty Nip always has gummy bears for us. This Have a Nice Day tournament taking place at the Doug Woog Arena in South St. Paul, Minnesota. Uh, not the normal venue for Minnesota Roller Girls skaters. That's normally the legendary Roy Wilkins Auditorium uh, downtown in St. Paul. We've moved out here to the Doug Woog, having a great time out here. The polished concrete floor has not caused much trouble to skaters uh, that I've seen. Skaters at this level can adjust to different floor surfaces, certainly. Sure. It's a great space. Uh, we do love the polished concrete, and uh, it's always fun to say Doug Woog. Saying Doug Woog was great. I got to go read the. There's a there's a multi-part biography of actual Doug Woog out there that I need to go read. Yeah. Can you do that at intermission and bring us back some info? I might. Or I might. Yeah. Well, you know, Doug Woog. I mean, I know that he was a famously a hockey coach for the Minnesota Golden Gophers men's hockey team. He continued to work for the university after that. He was a graduate of, I think, South St. Paul Packers. That would make sense. Uh, which is the sure. home home high school team here. We can see from all the banners hanging of their various championships and state tournament appearances. It's a great space. We like when we can get into um, hockey arenas at times because the floor is usually nice and that track fits well. We've got plenty of space for our uh, skating officials who are on the outside of the pack. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I, I try to remember where leagues skate in parts of the country that don't have hockey arenas, you know, every 15 feet. Right? Is, how is that a thing? In Florida, it was Minnesota, always actual roller skating rinks, which sometimes could be a little tighter. Yes. Although I remember uh, seeing some derby bouts on some really classic old school hardwood that was really pretty fun. So. Yeah, Minis Minnesota Roller Girls' um, first bouts were up in the Coon Rapids Cheapskate. Yeah. And as you mentioned, yeah, depending on the size of that roller rink, that space tends to get a little bit tight at times. Um, it looks like we are preparing to get ready to proceed to some more derby here. Uh, Luna Rosehip is jamming for Detroit Roller Derby B currently. And uh, she is the only jammer on the track. We've got a power jam situation happening and a very fast pack currently as her team is helping with some offense. So my skills and of deduction suggest that uh, I, didn't, I didn't see the jammer go to the box prior to uh, the end of the last jam. So my skills of deduction suggest that the challenge may have been what put that jammer into the box. Maybe. At any rate, we know the, ja the challenge was successful according to the scoreboard by Detroit. So yet another successful official review challenge. I, uh, I agree that that is a good, um, good assumption on your part. Um, so Luna Rosehip had a great apex jump, went down, got back up. Um, is currently pushing to get through those last couple of Windy City blockers up front. And um, Blink Skatey, too, looking to get some points right now. The apex jump into the baseball slide is not the most efficient set of moves in Derby, but it is pretty fun, and both moves have special names. So we'll give her points for that. Yes. Except not on the scoreboard, you know, because points. 
she was smiling as she went into that baseball slide. Um, so sometimes you do that, protect what you've got. Um, speaking of which, Blink, Blink 1 Skatey 2 flying all the way outside of the uh, ref lane on that last bit. Yeah, she got a, as the whistle was blowing, she got hip checked, blasted by her own teammate. Whoopsie. Whoopsie is not the name of that teammate. It was Kickin' McChuggett. But, ah, uh, Kickin', yes. Not to be confused with an actual skater named Whoopsie that was skating last night. Different story. And what is our score currently? Because this is quite what? close all of a sudden. 62-61 the listed score with 6 minutes and 47 seconds left in this first half. An official review underway right now. Hmm. I can only imagine what we are uh, reviewing. Uh, it looks like track maintenance oh. happening right oh, okay. in the middle of... So it might just be an official time out. Yeah, sorry, I said review. I'm so used to the reviews now, but you're right, it's an official <laughs> time out. They do happen more often, so we've got Sear doing a little... Um, Mop up there. Thank you, officials. Taking care of the track. Anything wet on the track is a bad situation. Anything wet, anything um, small and round, like if somebody loses a nut off their wheel, well, they, they have more problems than, than just that nut flying, I suppose, if they haven't gotten a wheel. Um, that happened. Did that not happen on Friday that somebody lost a wheel? Uh, was it? I, I saw some. I thought it was a wheel scanning across the track. It may have just been. A particularly round toe stop, but I think it was a wheel. <laughs> it was not good either way. Um, we do have Hannibal Wrecker making quick work of that to gain lead. But Rose also, uh, who is jamming for Detroit Roller Derby B, coming hot into the back. So second win calls that up with one point in that jam. I mean, one point's a big deal when you have a one-point lead. <laughs> Absolutely. Every point counts. If you're peckish, a little hungry, thirsty, we do have lots of concessions down here. And I smell hot nuts roasting, so come and get some of those. Monster and Nicholas Rage to the line for their respective teams. And Monster gonna head to the box for Detroit. That makes, uh, that was a track cut. That makes this a power jam for Windy City and Nicholas Rage, who's been very effective. And really has a, a surprisingly physical jamming style, just really busting, bumping. I mean, like, living up to the name Rage the, looks, the look, rage, I mean, jams yes. angry <laughs> is, the, is the look of it. Yes. And, and then does just slide through on that inside line on that last pass using those tiptoes. But, yeah, as she comes into the pack, there is a look in the eye that's, uh, that's a little scary. Yeah. Well, and it very works effective. in her favor. Yeah, very effective. Nice. Getting some very well-timed offense from Malicious and gets through a, that front pack again really capitalizing on what was that power jam um, we currently have monster back on the track uh, with a bit of a can I say kerfuffle because that's fun to say um, and a big hit by 44 that is driver um, doing as the name might suggest driving and a big hit to push Nicholas Rage out um, Nicholas Rage does call off that jam but does I believe have 11 points to zero on that jam. I notice we've got a lot of our junior derby skaters in the house from both the Frostbite, Minnesota, and the Sioux Falls Baby Dolls. That is going to be a fun matchup tomorrow. We saw them earlier this year, and it was a very close game. Got a big scrum happening. All the bodies in a 10-foot piece of track. But now, Detroit pushing through. Nat Attack getting lead jam. This is the first lead jam Detroit has gotten in a bit. Looking to capitalize on that as Tina Fatal is still stuck in the pack up front. Now Tina Fatal does break free onto her first scoring pass, but Nat Attack hits the pack first. Uh, forced out of bounds, calls off that jam just before Tina Fatal hits the pack. So there's a, I believe, was that a seven point jam? Yes? It appears to be, Listed. yes. Yeah. We do have an official review, however, being called this time by the second it's wind. Good. Sure. Yeah, Pitbull Princess um, kind of causing 
that last jammer out to call it off. Uh, we've seen some big hits and very nice strategic moves from Pitbull Princess this weekend as well. I'll just take this moment to give a quick shout out to uh, the Detroit Derby girls uh, from about 10 years ago. I was living here in Minnesota and I got a job in Michigan during the time that I was announcing the then North Central Regional Tournament, the Brawl of America. Detroit was here, uh, Chicago was here, most of these teams from this weekend were here. And so as I got this job in Michigan, it was announced over the thing, and I got a nice ovation. And that night at the after party, the Detroit Derby girls were so welcoming and kind to me, knowing that I was about to move to Michigan. It was very, uh, it really made my day that particular day. And so I've always had gratitude in my heart for the Detroit Derby girls from that time. We've got a one-person fan section over here, but as long as you're cheering loud, that's all that really matters. Um, again, thank you to our EMTs. We have Thumper, Kitty Nip, Malls to the Walls, um, over right by our benches. And we've got Mama and Papa Doc from Windy City. Always appreciate having them on hand in case uh, there are any injuries or perchance overheating on a day like it has been this weekend. Today is a little bit cooler. We've got the big doors in the back open up to get a breeze in. You can't just throw the windows open, though, in a place like this. That's not quite how it works. Right. But if we could score an open Zamboni door, that would be, that would be oh. slick, but I don't think. Can we get a whole Zamboni out here? I don't think so. No. That's not, that doesn't sound safe. I believe there's still ice on the other rink in this building, so sure. if you really need to cool down. Yeah, it could happen. <laughs> Just well, go lay on that ice. I mean, I've seen plenty of roller derby skated over ice with the the track, you know, the sport court. Sure. And the, you know, you do the, it's the plywood and then the sport court on top. Yeah. I've seen lots of derby skated like that. The problem is when it gets so hot that the ice starts melting and seeping up through the sport court, I've had bouts uh, delayed and maybe even canceled for those reasons. So I'm glad we're just on the polished concrete here today yes. at the Doug Woog. I believe most of the skaters appreciate that polished concrete. Um... We had some shirts for sale not too long ago when we hosted championships that said the road to hell is paved with sport court. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that most <laughs> skaters agree. Tends to be unpredictable and frustrating. All right, it looks like um, whatever was happening is maybe coming to a close and we're gonna start playing some more derby. We've got Hannibal Wrecker back on the line and Luna Rosehip. Luna with peace of mind to help hold that Hannibal Wrecker before going up to that Winnie City pack to push. Just some really strong moves and a nice tiptoe along that outside to gain lead jam for Luna Rosehip. Hannibal Wrecker is very close behind. I think Luna is going to try to make some points. And being drawn back, but not calling it. Hannibal Wrecker also being pulled back, and that is by Freakin' Reekin, one of the Detroit blockers. <coughs> Hannibal does make it through, gets past Slamazon. And again, trying to make it through for some points. I believe that jam ended up 5-3 in favor of second wind. 
still a very close score. Second wind at 79 and Detroit Roller Derby B team at 71. It's going to be Rose through the inside for Detroit to get lead. Nicholas Rage also on a scoring pass. Yeah, Nicholas Rage coming up hot. And gets through. Grabs those four points before Rose is able to uh, get through that second win wall. And Rose decides to call it off. So one point there scored by Detroit to four for the second win. Yeah, that's a tough situation when you get um, the lead jammer status, but your opponent makes more points. So being aware of um, where that other jammer is and whether or not you can get through that pack. 17 um, uh, has a little slip there, monster, but back up again. Doing some agile footwork side to side. Getting a little help from a 25 there. Um, that is Sugar Snaps doing a little O for her jammer. Monster kind of caught at the top there. But does make it through. Monster is your lead jammer. And Tina Fatal is very, very close on her skates. Tina making points. Again, not your lead jammer, but manages to score on that scoring pass while Monster um, was stuck in the pack and decides to call it off. Yeah, so two jams in a row where Detroit gets lead and then loses on the scoreboard one to four. And it looks like we have wrapped up that first period. We are at intermission. We've got about 10 minutes. Come down and check out the merch. Check out the snacks. We've got a great barbecue uh, grill cooking up some good stuff. We've got veggie burgers as well as the non-veggie options. Cold drinks, some chips, and, of course, we've got nuts from the Nut House. Roasted nuts, cinnamon almond, and bourbon pecan. We'll be back at you in about nine minutes.
All right, we are ready to derby. We're going into the second period of second wind against Detroit Roller Derby B team. And it looks like our matchup is currently Nat Attack and Nicholas Rage. We've seen Nicholas Rage be quite successful jamming for second wind. Um, currently stuck behind Slamazon and a number of other blockers for Detroit, including Driver. But popping out the front has one to beat and does so. Nicholas Rage is your lead jammer. Took about 30 seconds to get that lead jam call there for Nicholas Rage, so some good defense from Detroit, but two minutes is a long time in a jam in Derby. And we do have Nat Attack in the box currently, so this is a power jam. Nicholas Rage looking to capitalize on that power jam situation has picked up four points. Ooh, and does skip over Tessa Hurt too. Picks up eight points so far in this jam for second win. Nat Attack getting pushed to the outside, but makes a smart move, popping back onto the track. Going in behind so she doesn't gain position on any blockers that might have been ahead of her. And second win is now at 98 points. Uh, Detroit Roller Derby at 73, starting out with a big jam in this second period for Nicholas Rage. Absolutely. Uh, the second win had gotten out to a bit of a lead in the first half, and then Detroit closed the gap down to a single point at 62-61, I believe. And then second win start. It was real close for a while. The last few jams of the first half, the second win built back up to that. I believe it was a 14-point lead. We could. Oh, so sorry. We have Tricky Pixie on the line for uh, Windy City Rollers. I believe that is the first time she has jammed in this bout, and uh, and she has received lead jam status. Up against uh, Luna Rosehip, oh. who has been quite successful in this bout. So uh, tricky, pushing hard, knocking around the back of that pack of Detroit roller derby blockers. Hopping along that inside line, one to beat up front, now two to beat as those blockers are reforming, um, but called out of play. Tricky Pixie gaining four points on that jam. Doing some nice little juking moves, scooting to the outside and spread eagle around that pack, sliding through like it ain't no thing. Tricky Pixie making it look easy, currently has eight points in this jam. The jam has been called off as Luna Rose Hip got out of the pack. And second wind um, going to keep those 11 points that they just racked up in this second jam. So that is that two 11 point jams in a row? Two 11 point jams in a row. 11 0, 11 0. Brings them up to 109 for second wind, 73 for Detroit Roller Derby. And that's a lead that feels substantial right now given the history of this bout so far. It's been real tight and uh, impressive that the second win can come out of the half so strong to build up that lead. Detroit is fielding Monster um, as jammer for this jam, and wisely doing so, she does make it out as lead jam, but has Hannibal Wrecker, uh, well, was close behind, but called on a penalty now. So this is a power jam for Detroit. Unfortunately for Hannibal Wrecker, she didn't see that call right away, skated another almost a half lap since then, so extending the penalty by a couple of seconds, although she smartly uh, raced right back to the box as soon as she was aware of the call. Uh, there was a time where you had to go derby direction all the way around the track to get to the penalty box. Not any longer. If you have the wherewithal and know where you are on the track, if you get called for a penalty, you just get there the fastest way possible going around the outside of the track. And Monster tiptoeing along, pushing up against a two wall, and now really doing some nice footwork around that outside. 
a lot of uh, lateral movement, sliding back and forth and then getting through. So Detroit is answering those 11 point jams from earlier in this period. Freakin' Reakin and Slamazon holding Hannibal Wrecker back there along with Tessa, number nine. And it looks like Detroit is back to a full pack on the track, but Monster making it through currently has 16 points and that jam has gone a full two minutes. Very much in favor of Detroit. Absolutely, a lucrative two minutes. A track cut was called at, as the jam expired, it looks like Chicago currently has three skaters sitting in the penalty box. Uh, so the jammer, the pivot, and a blocker. So to a, an empty box for Detroit. So they could keep that momentum going. A 16 point, a second 16 point jam consecutively would be very impressive and really change the tone of the first couple of jams. Absolutely, here. and it's starting out with a very quick lead for Rose from Detroit and a lot of offense being played by the Detroit blockers. Although a bit of a drawback as 413 has, uh, Malicious has bumped out Rose. She said, that's all right, I'll just duck down and get around the outside. There's the first four points for Detroit in this jam. Rose gets another four before that box is cleared. We currently have full packs on the track. Hannibal trying to get around the outside does get drawn back and looks like there is a penalty, uh, potentially a pack destruction. So uh, Meryl Slaughterer is in the box right now. So Hannibal Wrecker on a scoring pass at this time. Manages to make it through relatively quickly and easily. Gets those four points and then three more to Detroit on that pass and then the jam is called by Detroit. Now we've got an official review by Detroit. So we'll see uh, how that turns out. Nonetheless, another successful jam for Detroit cutting into the lead down to single digits as currently listed on the scoreboard. Yeah, Detroit Roller Derby has hit that century mark. Um, looks like they received 11 points on that jam. We'll see how this official review turns out, if there's something that might change that. It's unsure, but the dazzle of zebras in the middle is conversing. Try to determine how that call is going to end up. We'll do another super fan shout out watching from home. Detroit All-Stars Captain Jen Price is currently watching this. Thank you for attending to this awesome bout, Jen. We have 22 minutes and 22 seconds left of this period. A lot could happen in that time. It's been a very exciting uh, matchup, a lot of back and forth, and Detroit currently chipping away at the 113 to 100 um, score. Earlier I said thank you to uh, Detroit Roller Derby for being so welcoming when I moved to Michigan years ago. I guess then I should also say thank you to 
the Windy City Rollers, the first roller derby league I ever saw who introduced me to roller derby in September of 2009. No, 2006. September of 2006 is when that was. And uh, yeah, so I was a Windy City Rollers fan before I knew roller derby even existed elsewhere. And so that's a uh, big part of why I'm here today. That's excellent. They hooked you in. I got into roller derby because I was on a uh, plane on the way to Colorado and was surrounded by rockets. <laughs> I was surrounded like, by rockets? I was like, who are you people? <laughs> um, amazing group that I then later got to skate with for quite a while. A number of the players that were on that plane headed to play in Albuquerque. Um, talked to me about derby, fed me um, cookies, and said, hey... You should try out. Yeah, yeah. You have a sensible haircut. You'd be fine in derby. I said, all right, I've, I've got skates from sixth grade. Yeah. Why not? What could possibly go wrong? What could possibly go wrong? I almost didn't survive my first tryout, but uh, well, here that. we are today. Here we are today. <laughs> Again, the Rockets being a home team of the Minnesota Roller Girls, for those watching from home who may not be intimately familiar with the Minnesota Roller Girls home team uh, setup and schedule. I assume everyone knows the Rockets, so thank you for that explanation. <laughs> the um, Rockets always assume that, I mean, that, don't they? right? It's Why not? Rockets thing to assume. Sure. Why would you not know us? <laughs> derby has changed my life. I have yet to run into Derby people who are not very gracious and kind. I mean, they're, they're mean on the track, but that's, <laughs> that's competition for you. We've got the wave. We've got a four-person wave. And, oh, I believe it has caught on in the stands. The so Doug Woog's getting crazy. Yes. For those of you who um, are watching the feed and not able to see the stands, eh, about eight people got involved in that wave. That's solid. That's oh, solid. and it's starting again. Uh, yep. Meh. Okay. <laughs> Chicago second wind skaters really want to make that happen. I always enjoy the very, uh, you know, when you have something like an official review, uh, seeing how the coaches and captains conduct themselves out there. Last night there were a couple where the, the four of them were in a really animated conversation that then continued with the second, a second official review. They just jumped right back in and they were just talking and laughing the whole time. This time all four of them not talking to each other at all, just staring intently at right. the referees. Yeah, not even talking to their own, um, their own teammates. Uh, so serious conversation happening as... It looks like No Ship Sherlock is relaying some information about the outcome of that review. Skaters are back on the track after that official review, which has come to its conclusion of some sort. Uh, score continues to be 109 second win and 104 Detroit. We got two jammers out there. And it looks like number 13, Nat Attack, is your lead jammer. Just shoots out of that pack along that inside line, finds a space and cruises right on through. Nicholas Rage still working up at the front, grinding away, trying to get past the last couple blockers from Detroit. While Nat Attack is on a scoring pass. Nicholas Rage getting drawn all the way back to that corner one. Comes around, makes it through, and Nat Attack has picked up four points so far. So the previous jam ended in official review, and it appears that, based on the scoreboard, Detroit did not win that official review. Uh, however, at one point, it was second win score was listed at 113. It was at 109 for a while. Went up to 113, went back to 109. I don't think that had to do with the official review. Yeah, something uh, definitely happened, and uh, we are currently in a five-point game. That's right, and we've got uh, three skaters in the penalty box to an empty box for Detroit. So three in the box for the second win. This is a power jam for Nat Attack. And facing only two blockers, Detroit's trying to slow down and split up those two to make sure they can't make a two wall. Right, Nat so Nat Attack easily gets through um, as those two blockers that were 
out there for a second when we're split up. Nat attack knocked to the outside. Um, it looks like maybe by a skater who is now in the box for a second wind. Um, Pitbull Princess. Nicholas Rage finally out of that pack. So a big power jam for Detroit, and we've got a lead change, 115 to 109. So the second win came into this half. Ooh, 113. There's that 113 I was looking for earlier. Yeah. So we've got, uh, came in with a 14-point lead, the second win to the second half. They had consecutive 11-point jams to build up that lead, and it's been all Detroit since then. Detroit definitely answering to that. Uh start to the second period and putting themselves on the board. They're also fielding Tricky Pixie again um, for second win. So we've seen her out there jamming twice. Uh, Luna Rose Hip is your lead jammer currently. Doing some really nice juking and takes that inside. Does get four points on that scoring pass. I like the confidence of Detroit there. They, they got this lead. They, you know, I mean, on, in the game, but also the lead jam. They decided to keep skating, trusting their blockers to continue to enhance it, even though the opposing jammer was also approaching the pack on a scoring pass. Something, a, a choice that you don't always see a team make, but they're feeling confident. And they want to keep this run going as long as they can. Yeah, more and more you see the points, uh, you know, getting those four, four points and then calling it off. But this jam is being run. They're saying continue to skate and now calling it off. So that is a 4-8 jam in favor of Detroit. Well played, well called on that. Absolutely. So yeah, they, I mean, they, they only netted the four points, so they wouldn't have needed to take the extra effort. But you know, they didn't, it didn't cost them anything, certainly. A little bit of time, maybe, that that yeah. might be part of the strategy. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how much you want to milk the clock with a six-point lead, but... I mean, if you can keep that six points, why not? That's right. I mean, that's why I'm, I'm over here talking and not coaching. That's all I'm saying. I, I don't coach, nor do I pretend to, yeah. but, uh, you know, we can talk about things here, including uh, Hannibal Wrecker back on the line and Monster. Monster's been quite successful recently, um, fielded and got lead-making points earlier in this period. However, Hannibal Wrecker is lead jammer for second win. And Second Wind is uh, making some interesting gestures from the coaching bench as Hannibal tiptoes around, does a great little spin move on the inside. Again, if you uh, ever casually roller skate and want to try spinning around on your skates like that, good luck. Yeah, did you see that? She just did it again? Yes. <laughs> that, was that was amazing. It was amazing. was. I was. My jaw was still dropped <laughs> from the first time, and then she just did it again. Yeah, like, let's, what a, let's see what else we've got here, right? Huh? All right, that was on the outside. She does tip, it again. Just okay. tiptoed, no problem. Did not cut speed at all. No, I mean that one. That one looked much less impressive. Only in compare. Only in comparison. Right, but still, it was still a a amazing. Move. Yeah. So Hannibal currently at 12 points for this jam. Uh, Detroit has been held to zero. Monster really struggling up front against that tough wall. We've got all four second win blockers up there. Oh, and now three as one is headed to the penalty box. Monster has completed her initial pass. Hannibal Wrecker has 16 points and is going for more. Now calling it off with only a couple seconds left of that jam. So that is a 16-point jam for second wind. It is still a 10-point game. Are those consecutive jams with lead changes? Or not quite? No, it was, it was not quite consecutive jams. But two lead changes in very short order. So uh, if you're playing by the rules, stay safe out there. 133 to 123 as we... Just under 16 minutes left on the period clock. We got Nicholas Rage on the line for second wind and Rose. 
believe we've seen this matchup before. Nicholas Rage has been quite successful. Um, got a very jumpy, jamming style, but also just the power of pushing and getting low. Seen Nicholas Rage get up on just that one skate, also doing some great moves. And Rose working on that outside, but being um, called perhaps on a cut. I'm not sure what that penalty was, but Rose is in the box, and it is a power jam. So Nicholas Rage is through, capitalizing on this power jam situation. Second win, setting up to uh, help with some offense. As you would. And now into a defensive formation as Rose comes out of the box. As you're aware, uh, Roller Derby, you might be playing defense one second, offense the next, and then defense right away. So that track awareness is so important, that communication between you and the other blockers and teammates. We've got short packs for both teams currently. Um, however, that does not seem to hinder their blocking ability as we've got those very strong tripods and a nice hop by Nicholas Rage doing that apex jump, getting around and out, being followed by Rose. So Rose started her scoring pass with only a few seconds left in that jam. Fantastic job by the blockers of Second Wind, who have been the story more often than not in this bout. And they're building that lead back up to 18 points, if my math is correct, with 13 and a half minutes left on the period clock. And I'm always going to specify on the period clock because there's basically no chance that this bout ends with the period clock. All right, with the I, score I like would this. agree that that, yeah, that that is true as well. Number 13 running across that inside line and becoming lead jammer. That was, uh, that was like within two, three seconds there, got out of that pack. So Nat attack very successful, but um, tr Tricky Pixie still trying to get through. Stuck prior to turn one as of yet, continuing to be recycled back. Nat attack pops through, has one more to beat and ends up in the penalty box. Might have been a forearm call. And a cut being called on number 44. That is driver. So we've got a couple in the box for Detroit. And Tricky Pixie has scored four points during that power jam. Eight points. Tricky Pixie uh, had not jammed as much as some of these other jammers. Gives them a little bit of a different look, but still can be very effective from the jam line. So uh, perhaps a luxury for the second win to have enough people that they can pull one of their, somebody who had been blocking out to jam and do so effectively. Quite effectively, tiptoeing on that outside line. Just a really strong jamming abilities, uh, that power and that agility really shining through for Tricky, Pic Tricky Pixie. Big hit there. <laughs> the smack of knee pads <laughs> resounds through the stadium. Nat attack getting a little bit of help to uh, get that second win blockers moving. Does get bumped out and is drawn back many, many feet. Official timeout was signaled. We'll see how long that lasts. There were a lot of points scored on that last jam. And by a lot, second wind uh, had 20 points up there and Detroit eight. 
score currently stands at 161 to 131. Um, second wind has really lengthened that lead a bit. It's always intriguing to see the, the head skating official in the penalty box area. And now going over to, to the Detroit bench uh, to talk with them about the situation. Looks like bringing a Detroit skater to the penalty box. Oops, sorry. Excuse me. So it looks like there's a the penalty that needed to be served. Starting at this jam with a short pack for Detroit. Yeah, the three two pack advantage for Windy City. Luna Rose hip out there again. <laughs> Jamming for Detroit. But Hannibal Wrecker successfully gaining lead status as she has done so many times already in this bout. Oh, and just scoots past Detroit blockers, the two that are on the track currently. And we have a full box, <laughs> full penalty box <laughs> for second wind, um, which allowed Luna to slide through pretty easily these last couple of passes. We're just doing a little 27 and five right now. Um, yeah, <laughs> working on your stride and scooting through. It's remarkable to see uh, such a turnaround in within the course of a single jam. It started off with the two, uh, well, three, two pack in favor of Windy City. And then Windy City filled up the box completely. And all of a sudden we've got a two minute jam with Detroit, uh, an awesome opportunity to cut into that lead as they've done already here in, in this one. Luna completely capitalizing on this power jam situation and the, the penalty boxes being full back and forth um, has gained 16 points and working on more currently. Seeing these packs slow down quite a bit now that we are full packs on the track. And we have a cut called on Hannibal Rucker, sending her back to the box. This jam has ended, and the next one will start in a power jam in favor of Detroit. That was a serious jam. That was a just action-packed. You can't fit much more derby in two minutes than that. Do not blink or look away. Got a Chicago timeout as they regroup. I'd say the period clock just about to become a, an important factor in this one. Only nine minutes and 14 seconds left with what is now an 18 point lead on the scoreboard in favor of the second win. So a 12 point net gain for Detroit on the last one. And they do have the power start after this. So I think an excellent call by Chicago to take the timeout at this a critical juncture because there have been such big momentum swings and it's seldom been one jam at a time it's been two and three jams that these you know are getting big you know, racking up big double digit points over two or three jams so Ch Chicago doing everything they can to stop Detroit from continuing that pattern maintain this 18 point lead and uh, hopefully hold on for the victory yeah sometimes you just need to get back together and uh, take a breath cheer real loud get back on the track play your kind of game and we'll see how this comes out in the next jam Monster, the jammer of record for Detroit. As we mentioned, starting in that power jam scenario, 
Got two to beat up front. And Detroit trying to pull back a blocker. Monster is out for lead jam status. Detroit is holding number 187. That is kicking McChuggett. Allowing Monster to score, um, but kicking McChuggett's teammates have joined her uh, to try to hold Monster. Does not work on that pass as Monster runs along that inside line. We do have Hannibal back on the track as well. Almost back up to full packs. So we have Monster in the box. This jam is gonna go a full two minutes. So Detroit started with the power start, had the lead, got eight points to start it off, decided to gamble and keep playing and keep trusting their blockers. The gamble uh, appears not to have paid off at this moment, as now Hannibal Wrecker out of the box and scoring for Chicago. You have so to know when to hold them. Know when to fold them. <laughs> is, that, is that what you have to do? I, I mean, when you're gambling. I, it yeah. does make sense. I don't know. <laughs> this jam has concluded its two minutes, and a second win did come out ahead at 12 to 8. Actually, it looks like 12-12. I spoke too soon. I take it back. So this official review taken by Detroit at a pivotal juncture in this bout. At the moment, the 18-point lead holding for the second win. Seven minutes and 10 seconds left on the period clock. The referee's going to make sure they get this one correct. Pretty much anything can happen in seven minutes and 10 seconds in Derby with a game this close. And so much of that back and forth, very strong blocking, um, some great jamming out there as well. And uh, good matchup, good team matchup. Perhaps a little pep talk on the track out there for second win. Number 48 giving words of wisdom and then heading back to the bench. Teams not intermingling right now. They're keeping to themselves, focusing on what to do next. Which is probably something like stop the other jammer, make points. What they're talking about, just make points. We've got seven on the line, Rose for uh, Detroit. And we've got Nicholas Raid. All right, it should be a great matchup. Let's see how this pans out. Mm -hmm. 
Nicholas does come out as your lead jammer. And Detroit reforming in the back. Rotating to try to keep Nicholas from getting it around the sides. But passes a couple of blockers and then on the inside line, runs along that inside line for four points. Well, every lead jam at this point is critical to the outcome of this bout because with only this many minutes left, uh, the lead allows the second win to really control play, especially if they're scoring more points than their opponent. And yeah, they're and choosing to skate this one out, at least for a moment. Uh, oh. oh, yeah? Yeah, so she did call it right. So that must have been like a hit it and quit it kind of a situation where you're just far enough ahead that you know you can hit the pack and get points and call it off before your opponent scores. And that time it was successful for two more points scored on that final pass. A big two points as it increased the lead to 28. Yeah, 28 point second wind lead. And they're gonna send Tricky Pixie to the line to maintain that momentum. Meanwhile, Nat Attack out there for Detroit trying to change things up. Five and a half minutes left on the period clock in this final B-team game of this B-team tournament. Nat Attack holding her face, uh, no doubt a hit from a, maybe an elbow or a helmet or not pleased with what has happened, but still continuing to jam. Um, does take that cover off, looking for the pivot. And when that helmet cover is dropped, you need to make sure that you are passing that successfully. Um, we do have a star pass and this jam has been called. So this an official timeout, four minutes and 46 seconds left on the period clock. 28 point lead listed and our referees are conferring. This is a round robin B team tournament, but this last game does have more of like almost a championship feel to it. I mean, it's a close one, it's tightly contested. The teams are, I mean, they're not just like loose and, and laughing out there like we've seen some of this weekend. I mean, I think these teams really want to win. And the referees are also taking this, of course, completely seriously, finding out uh, exactly what has happened so that they can make the correct determinations about what's going to happen. Very competitive derby all weekend. Um, and some of these skaters have skated three, four games already. Um, I know uh, the day after a home team bout, I'm ready to sleep in. Maybe hot tub. Hot tub. Right? I, I mean, I have to go to a friend's to do that. But regardless, um, getting back out there and skating a couple more two, three more bouts. That's the athleticism that we're seeing out here during any tournament play. Hard fought, hard hitting, full contact roller derby. I saw people talking about um, doing ice baths. Yeah. Can't even imagine. <laughs> 
Sure, it might help. Why not? Ice bath for 45 minutes. You're probably completely numb and feel better, I guess. I, God bless them. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, if it works, go for it. It's not my move. Mm -hmm. Biofreeze was always my friend. Biofreeze and some ibuprofen. So we've got 667 on the line up against Tina Fatal. We haven't seen Tina uh, too awfully much during this second half. She's out there now pushing and gaining lead jammer status. It's another big lead call for a uh, second win. While Luna Rosehip is caught in the pack. Being that has been called a cut. Um, she kind of tipped back off of the track, but has been sent to the box for her trouble. So it is a power jam in favor of second win, not what Detroit was hoping for. So no penalty, no pass, making that a three-point pass mm -hmm. for, or no penalty, well, making it a three-point pass for Tina Fatal, and now the pack is rushing just a little bit, but Detroit has kept the penalty box full of blockers through this jam. An extremely unfortunate turn of events for a team trying to make a comeback in the final minutes here. Tina Fatal bumped to the outside, popping back in, um, making sure that she does not cut any of the player. Some great toe step moving, staying up on her skates, but now knocked out by 413. Malicious. And we see 667 Luna Rose Hip headed back to the box. Um, and skater bumped to the outside. A little slow to return to the track. This jam has been called off. What a swing in momentum over the course of a couple of jams. Again, we've seen so many of these huge momentum swings, but they've been swinging just a little bit farther in the direction of the second wind time and time again. And now, uh, what was an extremely close bout a few minutes ago, uh, looks like it could be a comfortable win for the team out of Chicago. We have a little over two minutes left on the bout clock, and we're going to be starting out in a power jam, but it looks like we've got an official time out. Yeah, there were a lot of penalties called in that last jam, and I think there was definitely some confusion among skaters being called out on penalties, so call, the same call being made multiple times. And those packs starting on the pivot line, giving uh, Nicholas Ridge a little bit of room to run up, a bit of a bit of a fast pack one to pass and does so knocks over freaking Rican in the process seems pretty excited about that wanting to continue to get more points and lengthen that lead great tiptoe on the inside four points four more points for Nicholas Ridge but Luna out of the box and through yeah, it's fun to see that jailbreak out of the penalty box. Three people standing at the same time, and they come out within a few seconds of each other. Dramatically changes what is possible on the track. Nicholas Rage, two more points on that last pass, calls it off. A minute and a half left on the period clock. Sees Luna coming up and calls it before uh, she can get any points up on the board. So it is currently a 208 to 163. It's a 45-point lead, right? Yes. Yes. I think so. I'm going to agree with you on that. Thank you. Because math. Number 17, Monster on the line. Up against Tricky Pixie. We've seen a lot more of Tricky Pixie, and um, she's been quite successful jamming. Currently getting knocked to the inside, but re-entering. Working that out. Outside, coming back in again. A lot of line work. The number of miles some of the jammers skate by... Getting bumped out, running back, bumped out. Really pushing through a scrum of skaters. Monster goes down on the inside, also running back. 
up against a two wall that turns into that tripod braced wall. So no lead in this one as the period clock dwindles. It has been one minute of this jam without a lead being called. And that has just changed as Monster has gotten out of the pack and is your lead jammer. So Monster got lead with one second left on the period clock. No time to even call it off and extend beyond this jam. So this will be the end of the bout. The Detroit team standing and cheering on their squad. A valiant effort here today. But it looks like the second wind are going to hold on. We have 23 seconds left of this game. Monster hoping to put a couple more points on the board as Detroit blockers are pulling Trixie way back. Oh, but she powers through, gains speed, and picks up four points. Four points for Tricky as well as four points for Monster. And we do have an unofficial score on the board. That was a fun game of roller derby right there. <laughs> Loved it. Great derby happening. Both teams cheering and excited about how that one ended. Just so well contested throughout. The second wind eventually were able to hang on. Some timely uh, making use of penalties on Detroit. 